BBOR Black Box Online Radio, coming to you from West Virginia, Black Box Ned 88 on Instagram for the bonus podcast. Hello and welcome to this new series here on Black Box Online Radio. My name is Ned Dahan and I am your host. You'll be noticing from the title that this is Zodiac Killer New Discovery The Moraga Letters Part 2. And if you haven't heard Part 1 yet, that's fine, you can keep listening. I always want these multi-part episodes and series to be available to anyone. You can jump right in the middle, or you can listen to them in the playlist that will be assembled in the near future. And if you're listening to this in the distant future, I invite you to check out the playlist so you can listen to them all in order. But in this series, it is going to be one where I discuss someone else's material I've been corresponding with an individual who uses the online name Sphere the Cube, and he is commonly referred to as Sphere, and that's how I will be referring to him in this series. If you didn't hear part one yet, I talked about Sphere's observations about the Z18 code. That's how I first found out about him. And the Zodiac Killer was a serial killer, but he also mailed in codes and ciphers cryptograms for people to solve. The the four confirmed ones are the 408, the 340, the 13, and the 32. They get their names because of the number of characters in them. The 408 cipher was solved first. It's the one that says, I like killing people because it's so much fun. But the final line of text has never been truly deciphered, and that's what I was discussing in part one. In part two, I'm going to be looking at Sphere's observations about the Z32 cipher, but it's really more than that. It's really more than just one particular code, because he will show how it could relate to other Zodiac correspondences and how all of this could be tied together. And if you haven't heard part one as well, or the most recent Zodiac Killer News Report, which comes out every Monday here on this channel, there is a suspect involved with this. Not only is Fury attempting to solve some of the codes, he had, and still has, a suspect named Robert Volvens. So, let's see how all of this ties in. And the next thing that you're going to hear is a piece of text that was written by Sphere. These are his observations, not mine. Being very clear about that, I also do not endorse his theory. Instead, this is not about endorsing anything. This is about you guys in the audience. What do you think about these observations that he has made? What do you think about the theory? What do you think about the suspect? Please share anything you want in the comments section down below. If you disagree, just please say that you disagree and state why. If you agree, please say the reason why you agree with it. I don't want anyone to feel like they should hold back what they're thinking. And if you have a longer, more extended response, you can contact me at blackboxonlineradio at AOL.com. There's a link to that in the description box. But let's um, have a read through Sphere's proposed solution to the Mount Diablo code, the 66 map code coupled with the Z32 code to locate a bomb presented as a two-part challenge by the Zodiac Killer. And once again, this is a thought experiment which includes an orange, and it's dedicated to all the people who had the will and skill to drill, who have sought truth and justice for the victims by Sphere the Cube. In September of 2022 is when this text was written. Let's say I have an orange, where the radius of the orange is 13. Then, if I draw a line from any point on the surface of the orange to the center of the orange, its length will always be 13. Now let's say I draw two points on the surface of the orange so that the distance traveled between them is 13 as well. Then the distance I travel along the arc formed between the two points on the surface of the orange equals the distance traveled around, uh, traveled along the radius or simply both equal 13. In this thought experiment, both numbers would equal 13. Both the radius of the orange and the length of the arc between the two points drawn on the surface. When I mark down on the orange, 
for point A as Mount Diablo and point B as the SFPD and draw a line between them with a length of 13, the angle they form at the center of the orange will be 225 degrees. 225 degrees is equal to 4 radians. And the word radian can be used in a couple different ways. Its most famous connection to the Zodiac Killer mystery, and yes, this is my interjection, is from Gareth Penn and his 1987 book, Time 17, which actually deals with some observations that he made earlier in the uh, 1980s, much earlier, actually, when he was looking at how the Zodiac Killer used the word radians in his active vocabulary, and Gareth Penn's father, Hugh Penn, is the one who made the observation that only perhaps 1% of the population would have the word radian in their active vocabulary. So then Gareth Penn put the radian on top of Mount Diablo, one of the Zodiac Killer's favorite places, and one arm of the radian went to Blue Rock Springs, where Darlene Farron was murdered on July 4th. The other arm of the radian went to Presidio Heights, where Paul Stein was murdered on October 11th of 1969. So, is the Zodiac Killer trying to clue us in on that? Well, one staunch critic of Gareth Penn was Richard Grinnell of ZodiacCiphers.com. I should say Richard still is a staunch critic and stands by this claim to the best of my knowledge that the Zodiac Killer wasn't trying to clue us in on the locations of his murders. The reason why the radians are used in the Zodiac Killer's letter to provide context is to talk about the location of a bomb. But a radian is an angle of 57.29 degrees approximately. Sometimes it's written as 57.3 degrees. But four radians would be 25, 225 degrees. Now this is um, back to Sferi's quoted text. Now since one radian equals 3,959 miles, then it is also true that 13 miles equals 0 .0033 radians and 26 miles which is reasonably the distance as the crow flies between Mount Diablo and the SFPD on 3rd Street on the 66 map equals 0, 0066 radians, point zero zero six six radians. I think it is extremely interesting as a thought experiment when thought about this way, the clue of 13 given by the Zodiac Killer takes on a deeper meaning. 26 miles equals Point zero zero six six radians, and 66 is the name of the Mount Diablo 66 map. Yes, it's often referred to as the Phillips uh, 66 map, and that's the one that says that it needs to be set to magnetic north. Also, 13 miles equals point zero zero three three radians, or the age of Christ when he died on the cross. This is interesting, as the Z32 solution offered in part 2 of this proof brings the hiker to a location of two inches magnetic north to Moraga Chapel PEW, and that almost certainly would be Moraga Chapel Pew, hence the name of this series, though, the Moraga Letters, which we have learned is more or less in the exact location, well, of some chapel in Moraga, California. For another thing, the answer just becomes go point zero zero three three radians, or 13 miles, or two inches on the 66 map toward the SFPD on a heading of four radians or 225 degrees when 17 degrees east of true north declination is set for magnetic north. And I'm just going to throw in an interjection right there one more time because we have to remember that the Zodiac has mailed in a cipher with 32 characters and the Zodiac has mailed in the Phillips 66 map and we are looking for a bomb. But the reason why Jesus Christ and his age are mentioned there is because Sferi will have some reasons why he's trying to draw about these connections. And I even used one of his challenge questions on a Zodiac Killer news report that was asking about, was the Zodiac Killer drawing upon Catholic influences, Catholic influences, Catho almost said Catholicism, but Catholic influences in his letters, and he frequently referred to the word Christmas as Christ Mass, and even even some people were challenging me on the question, saying, no, it shouldn't be only Catholic, that could be any form of Christianity, I mean, Christmas converted into Christ Mass, 
Okay, I'll give you that, but the challenge question would still stand the same. Is is that meant to show that this person was raised in some type of Christian tradition? So let's just keep that in mind and get back to um, Sferi's uh, quoted text here. At 17 degrees, magnetic north declination adjustment, and at 225 degrees, and it gives you 242 degrees for the angle that's formed between Mount Diablo and the SFPD when a line is drawn on the 66 map. The zodiac is just simply demonstrating the distance traveled along the length of the arc when measured in degrees from the observer's viewpoint, and the distance along a straight line in radians from a mover's viewpoint and it becomes equivalent in this challenge that they both equal 43. They both equal 13, excuse me, of course, the number 13. I don't know why that one looked like a 4. They both equal 13. And if we look at this diagram where S equals the distance traveled, we are thinking that this number to be equals 13 in both scenarios. Equals 13. When approached in this manner, suddenly the angle of 242 degrees southwest between Mount Diablo and the SFPD, we observe looking over the map clearly as 242 degrees, 17 degrees declination for magnetic north, and that equals 225 degrees, the heading needed to actually successfully hike toward the SFPD, which you look for at the length of the arc using the central angle of 225 degrees and a radius of 13. And you get the length of the arc at 12.75, or rounding up, and that equals 13 again. I have put forward the basic method, but the more I am thinking about it, the more it makes mathematical sense. It appears that the zodiac is presenting a highly controlled design that revolves around a principle. When considered in this manner, all of the fog of the Mount Diablo code caused by the clues, we are given the, that cause problem after problem, and when we are just solving on the map and failing to see that the distance traveled from different perspectives, degrees, the observer's viewpoint and the radians, and the mover's viewpoint can slowly be blown away. Seemingly, the Zodiac created the design in his mind and then expressed it on the map to the best of his ability with the tools available in his era. But thinking about the principle behind it, it allows us to see mathematically that the Zodiac wants us to travel from Mount Diablo in the direction of the SFPD on a heading of four radians southwest for a distance of 0033 radians, also known as 0 0.0033 radians, or 13 miles, or 2 inches, all equivalent values in the challenge. The key elements to the Mount Diablo solution are point A, Mount Diablo, given by the Zodiac, point B, the SFPD building on 3rd Street, and given by the Zodiac in his drawing, and the hub that's bokes out to unlock everything equals 13. The number 13 is given by the zodiac. It is interesting to note that mathematicians often have a favorite number. With the zodiac, the number 13 shows up quite a bit. Perhaps it is a number for, favored by the zodiac, the 13 hole punch card, the Z13, the 13 eyes on the Halloween card, and the equals 13 clue of the Mount Diablo codes are some examples. It is left to the code cracker to understand the difference between the observer's viewpoint in degrees and the mover or hiker's viewpoint in radians. And then the joke is that they are equivalent, so in the end, the answer is 1. The final answer is that you need to go 13 miles on a heading of 225 degrees southwest of Mount Diablo in the direction of the SFPD building. Go 2 inches on a heading of 4 radians southwest of Mount Diablo in the direction of that building, 13 miles on a heading of 225 degrees, where 225 degrees over 360 degrees, 2 pi 13 is the radius, and that equals 57.05, sorry, 51.05, repeating um, degrees length of an arc from the observer's viewpoint. And I think that... Um, the we should get to the conclusion, which is that 
The Mount Diablo Code Part 1 will at first bring the hiker searching for the bomb in the intended vicinity of Moraga, and um, a location there, let's just say that, as marked on the 66 map, but with the additional information offered by the Z32 Part 2 coupled with the ultim will ultimately bring the successful bomb searcher again to this chapel on and not going to reveal the location just yet but to the chapel that is located in Moraga, California. And Sphere does say thank you, and includes an author's note. It is hard for me to believe that it is a cosmic coincidence that the 66 map clues result in numbers like 0 .0066 radians or 26 miles when the miles are measured between the SFPD 3rd Street building and Mount Diablo. That seems to be a bit of the Zodiac Killer's inside joke. Additionally, that the coincidence would extend to the point where everything works in a beautiful balance with the rest of the challenge. When the Clue 13, written by his um, sigil, and where the radius equals 13, and the length of the arc equals 13, then the miles equal 13, and that 13 miles equals 0 .0033 radians, or a number must popularly associated with the Zodiac Killer, is also used with the master number of Ptolemy at Christ's age at the time of death. Final, Mount Diablo proof. A method for the field experiment, which includes the 66 map and a basic 1970 style compass. To illustrate the difference between observer and mover in solving the challenge, a hiker will physically walk in search of the bomb. Bomb challenge for from the Zodiac. Proof and explanation. The Mount Diablo code concerns radians and inches along the radians. That's a piece of text that was written by the Zodiac killer. Final answer. A hiker's perspective. So, how is one going to go about finding this bomb? Get yourself an old school compass. An old one that you can find. No fancy dials. Get the 1970 mood going. The Zodiac did not have a bunch of fancy software apps, but not a bad idea to use them, to verify when possible. And step two, stand on the peak of Mount Diablo. Now you have your map, you have an old school compass, and you have clues from the Zodiac killer. Clue one, the Mount Diablo code is concerning radians and inches along the radians. Clue number two, the sigil with SFPD hand drawn in the third quadrant. Clue number three, the 13 handwritten to the right of the sigil from the little list letter. Clue number four, is to be set to magnetic north. Note that magnetic north and true north are not the same. And that was written on the Phillips 66 map. Step three, orient your compass and find true north. Remember, the map along with the cipher is what locates the bomb. Time to find the bomb. Let's use clue number two. The SFPD is marked in the third quadrant in writing. We are on the peak. Not much else to go on. Maybe the bomb is there. Well, even though we are standing on the highest peak in California, it is tough to see the SFPD headquarters on 3rd Street. The darn fog. And as it does say that darn fog, I'm just reading. Good stuff, though. Better use our map. So we know our position, which we're going to refer to as P on Mount Diablo. Let's mark the SFPD on 3rd Street as our destination, D, for the possible location of the bomb. Let's draw a straight line between the two. Okay, now let's check our compass on our oriented map, and we get 242 degrees to the southwest. And this is um, tying into the Zodiac Killer's um, letter, which says here, the part of the uh, map instructions. Others I shall skin them alive, and a lot of them ran around screaming, and all billiard players I shall have them play in a dark and dungeon, and all with crooked cues and twisted shoes. Yes, I shall have great fun in plating the most delicious of pain to my slaves, but on the image below, the Zodiac Killer, despite his deranged and absolutely annoying personality, drew a circle with a cross going through it and marked the SFPD building 
and so, or he says SFPD. I shouldn't say the building. I don't want to jump to conclusions, but it says SFPD, and there's an what it looks to be an equal sign, and a very darkened circle. And outside of the circle with a cross going through it, there is equals thirteen. Great. Let's start walking. Not so fast. Why? Let's not forget about those two types of north. There's true north and magnetic north. Do you mean as hikers if we just start walking southwest in a straight line from the peak of Mount Diablo at a bearing headed 242 degrees, we won't arrive at the SFPD? No, because of magnetic north in that area at that time was just about 17 degrees east of true north. Now what? We simply adjust for it. So we walk at southeast at 225 degrees, bearing on our compass, which then accounts for plus 17 degrees of the declination, allowing us to arrive at the SFPD. Let's go. Not yet. Step number six. We have that number three of a clue, 13. What is that? Well, we have our destination line to walk on to get to the SFPD building, but really, the Zodiac did not say for sure that that is where it is. Maybe he is giving us in clue number three equals 13, a distance of 13 miles. We are supposed to use the map. Miles make sense. Let's look again, and the scale of the map is where 1 inch equals 6.4 miles, and we are dealing with 1970s technology and tools, but we gotta find the bomb, and we don't want to get lost. Okay, think. Is there anything or anywhere that might be a good place for a bomb to be located along the P to D position and destination path on the oriented map? That is 13 miles from the peak of Mount Diablo. Yes, it appears at about 2 inches, traveling southwest along the PD line. Again, that's position to destination. Toward the SFPD, there is a small college. Maybe the bomb is there. Okay, great. But what about clue number one? The Mount Diablo code concerns radians and inches along the radians. What about that? We realize that our heading of 225 degrees is considered a common angle, which can be expressed mathematically as 5 pi 4 radians. Those interested in math will know that this angle and its radians expression. So, from the peak of Mount Diablo, we will walk 13 miles along 5 pi 4 radians, or at the scale of the 66 map where 1 inch equals 6.4 miles and 2 inches equals 12.8 miles or rounded equals 13 miles. We will travel by foot southwest at a bearing heading of 225 degrees southwest 13 miles or we will travel 2 inches along a bearing heading of 5 pi 4 radians to arrive where? In Moraga, California on let's just say a campus. One additional note for the clarification, 5 pi 4 equals 5 times 180 degrees over 4, or 900 degrees over 4, which equals 225, or 225 degrees, or 3.9 radians, or rounded up to 4 radians. Travel 13 miles, or 2 inches, at a southwest heading of 4 radians. When 17 degrees east of true north, declination is accounted for in that area. In that time, the hiker will arrive in Moraga, California, at the heart of the college. Geez, that is wild. Okay, let's go. We can talk about our ideas for part two, the Z32 along the way. Sure, but, you know, no one has really been able to locate the bomb using the Mount Diablo code in connection with the Z32 cipher. It seems that the world has given up. Most feel it is just um, gibberish, a hoax, tomfoolery. Well, we have the map in our pocket, and our bearing is correct. Let's walk and talk. Let me see that Z32 cipher again. Okay, and these are the author's notes and summary as lessons learned. Working on the Mount Diablo code taught me, again, Sphere, a lot about myself, my fellow man, and the state of the world of, of course, the mind of the Zodiac Killer. 
mostly the Mount Diablo code as an abysmal challenge, as it must have been in real time, offer some extremely interesting lessons about perspective. It's an obvious fact that the circles have 360 degrees in them, right? Well, it turns out, no. I have asked around and no one could really give me an answer as to why that is right. We memorize a magic number, such as the size of a circle, and we set ourselves up to parrot that back while struggling to comprehend something more advanced or more beautiful in math. And... We don't think about it too much, but there are people in this world doing math at an absolutely frontier of abstract human consciousness. I mean, when you think about it, the world that some mathematicians must travel in their minds to describe the world around us and the universe that it holds, then it frankly, it frankly can get most mystical. In contrast for the rest of us mortals, there is algebra. In my view, the Zodiac is playing a game with his radiance clue. The whole thing with pi and sine, and the radius of uh, and the distance and traveled and the arc on and on and on. Where is my damn scientific calculator? It is fun for him. It's a game of perspective. Through the layering of the degrees and the radians, the zodiac almost immediately traps us in our paradigm. We are trapped by how we are trained to look out upon the world. A world up and down, left and right, hot and cold, sun rises, sun sets. He is manipulating out our binary world. What is the larger reality? The sun does not rise up, the sun does not set in the sky, rather the earth is rotating. And that is my view of the essence of the trap. Radians offer a pure math of sorts when compared to degrees for somewhat of the same reason. Before numbers and language, two things the Zodiac played around with a lot were the codes, ciphers, and phonetic wordplay. And I guess code ciphers should be one, and phonetic wordplay, those would be the two things. We had the stars in the heavens. Ancient civilizations like the Aztecs, the Mayans, and the Toltecs used astronomy to mark the seasons and predict the future and appease the gods when making human sacrifices. His spelling errors were a key to this perspective, which carried over to the understanding of math. Was he just dumb, or is it only what he, we observed, what he expected we would observe? Was he simply just attacking our perspective on the world? 360 degrees equals one rotation. Yet there are five more days in a year, 365. The heavens rotate the constellations over the course of the year. You know, this might... But, but you can look up in the sky and you can see the position of the constellations if it is winter, spring, or fall. I believe the zodiac sure could. Degrees have been described as an arbitrary method in more contemporary mathematics. They were great when they were great because you could avoid decimals. And before that, decimals did not even exist. Radiance, when compared to degrees, as we made progress, seem to have nothing more than to complete the offer. With degrees, we simply get things complicated. You are watching Tommy Hayden race at Mid-Ohio Racetrack on his Yamaha R6 motorcycle, and you set of your chair in the center of the track circle. How far is he traveling? How far are you rotating your head? How far did Tommy go? How far did you turn your head? How many degrees? Many people feel that is how we do math, and write math, and write equations, exclusively from our perspective, so self-absorbed perhaps. But how do we break out of this perspective, especially when we think that it is right, so we cling and fight to hang on to it? How do we get into the shoes of the other person, out of the prison of our paradigm and self-control frame? and into the reference, and free ourselves to see many different perspectives. I know I don't know the answer. However, the question is most powerful and should be posed, and posing the question is what allowed for the mental model departures and need to present the proposed solutions in this paper. It dawned on me while working on with the Mount Diablo code that it could probably not be solved by looking down at the map analytically and exclusively. The Zodiac liked to layer and mix 
and match. Software has not been able to crack his codes. Even AI or artificial intelligence cannot answer why when it comes to layering. When he layers and weaves things together, it gets unreasonable fast, and math starts to get complicated. It's tantamount that the world to, to the world to start understanding that it is reasonable because it is creative. For the Z18 cipher, it's an anagram, it's phonetic. Moreover, Mount Diablo, it is the unit circle, it is the compass, it is a clock, it is a bird, it is a plane. No. It's just the Zodiac executing something. Very complex conceptually. Very simple with the attention of educating while humiliating. I thought if there was a solution, it would have to be from the perspective of the mover, not the observer. S equals distance traveled, which is 13. So it's not only about the degrees, but you very see very clearly also about the radians. So, I propose that the idea of the hiker's mover perspective, approaching him, this allowed many things that weren't too complicated to reconcile with the clues offered by the Zodiac to begin with. The realization started to open that I can't just orient the map to true north, I have to realize that the map-based reading observer's perspective won't get me to the bomb. I have to adjust for magnetic north and hike at, at 225 degrees, at a heading of 225 degrees, rather, the mover's perspective, one is static, one is dynamic. I would essentially have to zigzag. Bravo, Z. Z for zigzag. I would have to realize something more complete or more whole that I am not a function of some equation traveling the distance of an arc on a sheet of paper, but I am a human being walking in a straight line on a vast ball that is spinning at a speed of a, around a sun in a universe that I cannot comprehend. Not to take it too far, but I'm hiking while the earth on the earth's crust, and it's all moving. All the stars are rotating. I'm walking on, or in a certain sense, technically incorrect, heading from the, my paper map reading to adjust and compensate for the laws in the world which I dwell to arrive at the current location. If I walk solely on the paper heading 242 degrees southwest, I can't find the bomb. I must adjust for the limitations or perhaps the simple human condition. The whole thing is dynamic. It is not enough to be smart. I realize that I would have to be more fluid. I would have to be walking on a globe. The observer's perspective, I have to zigzag. But to me, as the hiker, I am, though, always appearing to be from my own perspective and going in a straight line along the radians. Even though clearly what I'm experiencing has nothing to do with the whole truth, it is the prison of my paradigm, and the Z holds the key and is in control, until it is realized that control is its own illusion and its own prison. If this proposal for part one of the Mount Diablo Code is sound, then it helps simplify the challenge of part two, which is the Z-32, which will actually locate the bomb. At least, that is the logic of this proposal. Final, Z-32 proof, deception over decryption, an explanation of part two of the two-part bomb challenge offered by the Zodiac Killer. And the Z-32, of course, was, um, as I said, milled in 1970. It has 32 symbols. Only three of them repeat. The letter C, the letter O, and a triangle, which could be a delta sign. And Sphiri is going to be proposing the uh, solution one more time. Two inches, Mag North, Moraga, Chapel. Pew. And it could be P-E-W, but also be Pew. Two inches, Mag North, Moraga Chapel, Pew. In the analysis I'm proposing when looking at the relationship of 13 miles southwest at 242 degrees when first measured on the 66 map, or in the hiker example, walking at an adjusted heading of 225 degrees southwest using 17 degrees east of magnetic north as the declination to hike from Mount Diablo's peak, 
toward the SFPD marker, it lands the hiker in the area as marked in the photo on the 66 map of Moraga, California, and a college campus. This is the heart of this small four-year Catholic college campus, and it has a chapel. In arriving to the proposed solution of the Z32 code once, I was situated on Moraga and the area of the map. I recognize that the symbols in the Z32 and that the symbols in number 2 and 32 slots on the Z32 would need to agree. When I used the word pew, a formal place to sit down and kneel in a Catholic church, I began with the phrase two inches. And the Zodiac's little list letter clue, Mount Diablo concerns radians and inches along the radians, or more precisely, Mount Diablo concerns radians and number of inches along the radians, and I even left out another word that time, Mount Diablo code concerns radians and number of inches along the radians, then they did agree. Then came Magnorth, stands for Magnetic North, another phrasing penned by the Zodiac Killer. Since I was using pew, then I tried chapel, and since pews are found in a chapel, which subsequently was leaving only six missing letters, Moraga has six letters. The Z32, looked at this way, provides additional details for the hiker seeking the bomb for both distances and to travel along the radians through deductive reasoning to locate the bomb. For instance, with the information, the hiker would be able to surmise, I have oriented my compass and map to measure 242 degrees southwest, but if I want to physically hike, then I must declinate 17 degrees east of true north to account for magnetic north, so I must be heading 225 degrees southwest. But how far do I go on a heading of 5 pi 4 radians, or 4 radians? Well, look at it this way. Look at the way the zodiac wants me to go. Two inches along the radians to be able to hold my destination line of 242 degrees, as previously indicated by the measurements on the 66 map. This brings the hiker to Moraga, California. At the very least, Moraga, California, a small college town. And with the additional clues of Moraga Chapel Pew, when they hike to the local area, the hikers can simply ask someone from the town, do you know where something called the Moraga Chapel is located? And the hiker can look in the Moraga Chapel among the pews for the bomb. Maybe near the organ, maybe in a side chapel, but the hiker has for the first time an actual location to search for the bomb. The solution will have to be analyzed by those with interest in the case from the perspective presented, and they will certainly be particular objections or this detail, or that, or this other detail, or that. However, it is my belief that if the person sits around and uses this analysis to the presented theories, methods, and mathematical realities that in time, the reasonableness of what has been proposed will at large stand firm. If there is some glaring weakness in the work of this author that cannot be reasonably adjusted while continuing with the remainder of the process and method as presented to them, hopefully at the very least the solution will provide a path to stimulate the thinking of those who are dedicated to finding the truth on behalf of the many victims and their families, and perhaps some encouragement that the Mount Diablo Code was not a fact, a ruse, or a hoax, but rather the challenge is the work of, the, of a killer who may also be a deeply talented mind in mathematics and simply viewed out, simply viewed our entire world from a rare perspective. And everything you've just heard in that um, section was written once again by Sphere. I was just simply reading his text. What do you think about this? What do you think about the solution? Put your ideas in the comment section down below. There's an explanation for the Phillips 66 map as well as how the compass is supposed to be used, but also what I think a lot of you will be very curious about, a solution to the Z32 cipher involving Moraga, California, the subject of this Zodiac Killer series. Now, I had the opportunity to talk to Sferi about this, as we've been talking for several weeks now, and I asked him a very direct question. Have you ever encountered another Zodiac researcher who has been incorporating Moraga, California, 
into their theories, and Sphiri said no, and I said, also, a strong no. I haven't heard anyone who has mentioned Moraga, California. I never even knew that Moraga was a town before I was in touch with Sphiri and saw that the Radiant does indeed go through there. And I think that maybe a big nutshell version of this would be the concerns Radians and inches along the Radians, and ultimately the Radians from Mount Diablo are going to lead to Moraga, California, and they're going to lead to a chapel, and the bomb could be in the pew, or nearby the pew, or Sufiri said on the side chapel, it could be by the organ, but it's a clue to the location of the bomb. Now, I had asked Sphiri a question once, what do you think happened to the bomb? And to be very clear, what happened to this bomb that could have been planted by the Zodiac Killer in the Moraga Chapel? And that's not the name of it, mind you. That's just the chapel in Moraga. And he said that it's possible that the killer removed it. And I didn't get an opportunity to ask a follow-up to that until earlier today. And I said, I'm going to ask you one more time. What do you think happened to the bomb that would have been placed in the chapel? And Sphiri's response was twofold. But the more important part is that he wanted to be very clear. You know, he does no theoretical observation. And I was egging him on. Just make an educated guess. This is an unsolved case, but what do you think happened to the bomb? And his answer was that perhaps the killer had a moment of humanity, because Sphiri doesn't only talk about the codes and the ciphers and the maps. He does have a suspect named Robert Volvens, whom Sphiri has... I'll just, I'm not even going to share any more personal info about him, but Sphiri thought that perhaps he recognized that there was something going on, and he didn't want to take it to that level. Yes, this person has committed homicides. Yes, this person is a murderer. Yes, this person is bragging about committing murders. But detonating a bomb in a public place was something that the killer just simply didn't have it in him to do. And that's a possibility. I mean, that's why that the, the killer himself may have removed the bomb. The other two, I said it's a twofold re response. The other response was that maybe the bomb was indeed located and the authorities never made that information public. I also wanted to ask Fury about what exactly is it with this fascination about the Zodiac Killer, Christian connection, or Catholicism connection, Catholic connection, or some type of Judeo Christian influences because I also noticed that most researchers do not talk about that. And Sphiri talked about the role of the chapel in this code solution. It's a chapel, it is about Jesus Christ, and the origin of this, if I'm using the term correctly, is where? Mount Diablo, the Spanish word for devil. So, in I mean, a lot of people even use these terms, that there is a war between the, um, the good and evil. Jesus, God, on one side, and the devil, also known as El Diablo, on the other side. So that this is representing the spiritual battle of what's happening. And in all reality, it's the Zodiac Killer manipulating the whole thing. And he has taken control of the devil and the chapel and everything, everything. And it's used to bring destruction upon humanity. So I'm paraphrasing that response, but I think I captured some of that. And I would love to know what you guys think about that particular, particular subject. And lots of people have identified the devil connection or a satanic connection or an El Diablo connection. But um, Siri is the first one I've heard as well who talked about it in that particular manner. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering about the background of Robert Volvens, if you didn't hear part one of this series. Robert Volvens was born in 1947. He would have been 21 at the time of the first Zodiac crime, 22 during the bulk of Zodiac activity, and we don't know exactly when the Z-32 was composed, but when it was mailed, he should have been approaching his 23rd birthday thereabouts. I just wanted to share that. And from what I've learned about him, I haven't seen an overwhelming 
emphasis on mathematics in his education, but I have seen direct evidence that shows that he was very familiar with surveying and, I mean, just dealing with plotting on a map and using angles and so on. That definitely seems to be in his wheelhouse. But you can also share some things about that in the comment section about that, because Gareth Penn in Time 17 is all about this, and in many ways Gareth Penn was one of the first people to point out how there are all these mathematical clues that could be hidden in the Zodiac Killer mystery, and it's not just as simple as some guy knew the name of an angle, a radian angle, and that's that that's it, game over. No, you're looking for somebody who has advanced education in mathematics. And I mean you can you can challenge that in the comments section down below. But really I wanted to use this as an opportunity for Sphere to share his observations. And like what do you think about the solution? to the map code and what the the Phillips 66 angle the Z32 angle what do you think about the zodiac killer trying to target a chapel on a college campus what do you think about the zodiac killer following through on his threat to detonate a bomb and then backing out at the end my immediate first instinct of that was this is five years ago. Now I'm, I'm I am able to say I have no idea. But five years ago, I was thinking, absolutely not. No way. There's no possible way this guy followed through on his threats. Because he didn't do them. Someone who wanted publicity as badly as he did, he didn't do it. He just made it up. But I've also noticed that the Zodiac is sometimes a liar and sometimes a truth teller. Well, you can put your ideas in the comments section down below. And... I think that this is a very interesting solution. I also recognize that Sphere seems like an intelligent person, and I'm very impressed with his uh, creativity in connecting all of these different points. But as some people pointed out on last week's Zodiac Killer News Report, could there be some influences of looking at a set of parameters and trying to draw connections to them, or looking at a pattern and then trying to create a new pattern that is similar but not quite the same. Or how about just looking at a set of facts that are true and pattern-seeking among those facts? All of those three things could be present here. And let's be very clear, this is an unsolved case. I do think that the mathematical observations that Sphere made are perhaps even better than Gareth Penn's because Gareth Penn was all about Morse code and binary and um, that everything is about rearranging the values of the words. I mean, like by the alphanumeric values converted into Morse code and binary. And it was gobbledygook, to be honest. I mean, his exact interpretation of the Zodiac case was most likely horribly inaccurate. But I would love to um, hear what you think about the solutions to the map code in the Z32 and the location of the bomb. Share anything you want in the comment section down below, and please tune in next week for part three. Goodbye.